probably already aware that calculus is the biggest area of study in specialist maths and calculating integrals is a big part of calculus, especially in exam one where you don't have your CADS calculator. And we're going to look at three integrals that have appeared in recent specialist maths exams, one easy, one medium and one hard. So this is one of the more straightforward integrals we've seen in specialist maths. Over 60% of students got full marks three out of three on this question, but over 20% got zero out of three. And what they probably missed was that we have to write this fraction as the sum of two fractions like this. Once we do that, it's reasonably straightforward. For the first one, we have x squared plus one on the denominator and it's derivative two x on the numerator. So it's just gonna become the log of x squared plus one. We don't need the modulus there because x squared plus one can never be negative anyway. For the second term, that's straight off the formula sheet, that is an inverse tan, inverse tan of x. Now for that first integral, we could use a u substitution with u is x squared plus one. Um, but if we do that, we then have to rewrite the terminals before we can write the integral in terms of u and then evaluate it as log of u um, from one to two. Either way, we're going to get the same answer, but for me, I probably prefer to just skip the u substitution in a situation like that. Recognize that we have a function on the bottom, it's derivative on the top, so we're just going to get a logarithm of that function on the bottom. And we could easily check that by differentiation. So once we differentiate, we'll get 1 over x squared plus 1 times the derivative 2x. Okay, so next step, we sub in our terminals, we'll get log of 2 minus log of 1 plus inverse tan of one minus inverse tan of zero. Log of one is zero, inverse tan of one is pi over four, and that gives us our solution. The second integral is a bit harder. So less students were getting full marks and more students were getting zero. And it's probably because they did not set up the partial fractions correctly. We do need partial fractions for this question. A U substitution or other technique wouldn't work. Um, and for that second fraction, it's got a one plus x squared on the denominator. We'll need a bx plus c on the top. Okay, if we have a quadratic denominator and we can't factorize it, we need a linear numerator. So ax plus b, bx plus c, cx plus d, whatever. Okay, we set up our equation in order to solve for a, b, and c. And in this case, I think the easiest way to do it is by equating coefficients. So if we look at the constant term on the left has to be one. And on the right hand side, the constant term is just coming from a times one. So a would have to be one. Then looking at the x term, uh, which on the left is zero, on the right is only coming from c. So then c has to be zero. And finally, from the x squared term, we can work out that b has to be negative one uh, because ax squared plus bx squared would have to be zero x squared. Once we sub in a, b, and c, this is what our integral becomes. For the first integral, that's just gonna be a logarithm. We do need the modulus there. And for the second integral, I would like to rewrite that. So we have the derivative of one plus x squared on the top, which is two x. And let's adjust for that with a constant of a half out the front. All right, so for the log subbing in the root three, um, log of one is zero. And for that second integral, it'll become a half log of one plus x squared. And again, we don't need the modulus because one plus x squared is always positive. Substituting in there, um, this is what we get. And we need to write our answer in this form log of root a on b. So these coefficients of a half there, we can use the log to put them as a power and then write everything with square roots. So log of root three minus log of root four plus log of root two. And if we use our log laws to simplify that, we'll get log of um, root six over four, which simplifies down to three over two. So it turns out fine, so long as we set up our partial fractions correctly. So again, it's really important to get that first step correct, and then the subsequent steps can follow on from that. All right, let's look at some hard integrals. So this is on the 23.3 Northern Hemisphere exam one, Looking at that clearly, you can see that is a hard integral. I've actually already done a video on this one, explaining this one, so feel free to check that out. There's a link up the top there. But I will go through this integral. This one is from the 2025 Northern Hemisphere exam one. So if you haven't tried that exam and if you wanna save it to be one of your best practice exams, then probably don't watch this until you've tried it and then you can check out the solution. 
But having said that, let's go on. The first part is to show that. I won't go through that. You can do the show that by differentiating x inverse tan root x using the product rule. But even once we have that, for part b, this integral, clearly we're going to use what we had in part one. And so this is what we have to evaluate. Um, the first one, it's just a matter of substituting in the terminals and that will come out to three pi over four. That part is okay. It's this second integral where we have a root x on the top and a one plus x on the bottom that I found quite tricky. The one that works in the end is to let u equal root x. So x is u squared, dx du is two u. And what that allows us to do is replace um, root x by u. And then once we multiply that u by this u, we'll get a u squared on top. The half and the two u and the two cancel. So we get u squared over one plus u squared. Still perhaps not immediately obvious how you're gonna integrate that. But what we can do is simplify it using a polynomial division becomes one minus one over one plus u squared. Then finally, we can integrate it, become u minus inverse tan of u. Okay, sub in the terminals, and this is what we get. Probably wanna put all those fractions with pi's over a common denominator of pi over 12. And finally simplify down to five pi on six minus root three plus one. So definitely quite a tricky integral there for only two marks as well. I would say the use of the u substitution there with u equals root x or x equals u squared is probably not that standard from what we've seen in specialist maths. But having seen it in this exam, very good to be aware of that technique just in case it came up again on a future exam. Hope you found the video useful. Feel free to give it a thumbs up and all the best.